welcome back. I'm so excited to have with us today, all the way from product management, Dave Nettleton, PM of Lake Base. Yeah. Massive announcement today. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Uh, really excited. This has been the, uh, I almost was about to say the culmination of a journey, but it's really just the start of a journey. <laughs> yes. um, so it's the sort of the end of the very beginning. Uh, but yeah, very excited to finally be able to tell people what we've been doing uh, for the last few years um, and bring the product to, for our customers to start to use it. Okay, then. So yeah, today is a big day because we've been able to talk about it. But this journey started a very, very long time ago. Where did this idea of kind of lake base come in? What is it that you, you know, how did this product evolve? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so, you know, customers for years have been trying to bring their analytical and operational data closer together. Mm -hmm. uh, data is getting generated in analytics platforms. It's super interesting, super valuable data. It's been used by machine learning, data scientists, analysts for years. But they've always been trying to bring this closer to the operational systems and use it in applications that are doing customer recommendations, um, uh, customer segmentation, and in the actual serving stack of the application. There's always been this mismatch between the analytical system and the operational system. Um, and that's been there for years, but like the new techniques that are coming in AI, uh, agents, the time to like get insights, learn, and recycle, huge emphasis on reducing that time. And so, so there's been a lot of opportunity for us to now sort of finally think about how we bring these systems together. And sorry, maybe to kind of like back up a little bit, because we know there's a lot of people that say hey, you use Databricks, we're doing it for analytics, and they've been loving the experience so far. But when you talk about operational things, like what, how is that different from analytical data? And like, why, why does it need two separate systems? Yeah, yeah. What would like a common use case be for this stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So great question. So, so I, I'd, I'd love to talk one of our customers who is one of our uh, launch announcements, so Heineken, right? So they're a, a, they work in uh, uh, beer brewing. Um, and, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, their, their team uh, several months ago, and they are saying, look, we've been building an analytical data platform for the last several years, and it's been great, but the needs of the business are now changing, and I need now to serve data at super low latency, so sub 10 millisecond latency, yeah. mm -hmm. at super high queries per second, tens of thousands of QPS, two applications. So the platform that I'm building, that analytical data platform, is now needing to evolve into an operational data platform. And I'm really trying to think about how to do that. And databases have been a very traditional answer to that uh, problem and opportunity. So customers have been using them, but struggling with that journey. Yeah. yeah, so I think like now is an interesting inflection point, really, because like the, the kind of two separate kind of stacks for data, that's been around for a while, I guess. Why now is my probably my biggest question. Like, you know, people have had this problem for ages. Why, yeah, yeah. why is it suddenly that they've gone, I had this problem and I don't like it and now <laughs> I want to fix it? Yes, yeah, yeah. I think we've been pushing, like Databricks customers have been pushing data to these databases for a long time. Yeah, yeah. They, they have, I mean, a couple of, I mean, a couple of the super big trends. So, I mean, I, I, I've been working in the data and AI industry for, I'm, I, don't, I can't even say years, it's probably decades now. <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, you know, I, so I've worked on some of the earlier versions where, you know, database systems would be the operational systems, data would be sent to the analytical system, reports would be generated and everybody mm -hmm. was happy, right? Yep. But then, you know, volumes of data increased, uh, real-time decision-making started to come to the fore, and analytical systems really, really started to take off. And obviously, Databricks really, really rode this wave because the first round of analytical systems were warehouses. And databases and data warehouses 20, 30 years ago were these monolithical systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just very typicated compute and storage, one system here, one system there, an ETL pipe connecting them. Yep. And the industry just sat like that for 20 or 30 years. Two big things happened though. Well, the, the cloud really came about as a way to now really make it much easier for people to get started with data. And that also started to generate huge amounts more data. And all of these systems started to become super fragile, which is where Databricks came in with Spark and big data processing and really started to provide, you know, going beyond Hadoop and providing these Spark big data processing engines. Yep. Um, and then as Databricks evolved, they realized, hey, you know, we started with Spark, but our customers really want to start to think about other workloads and ETL and data, data uh, uh, lake houses ultimately. Yeah, yeah. And, and that created an entire new architecture based on separation of compute and storage, mm -hmm. open formats, and then multiple engines working on the same data. So, so Databricks really came in and really disrupted the industry from the analytics side. On the, on the database side, not a lot of innovation had happened. Some disaggregation of compute and storage, 
But now with these two systems converging, people are just looking for the best of both worlds. And agents are now driving the faster cycle time of modern DevOps and Dev experience. There's just you just cannot do on today's existing yeah. infrastructure. So did I hear you correctly where, you know, uh, with Databricks in the lake house, we've separated the compute and storage so you can basically store your data once and then use it for all these use cases. Are we doing the same thing now with lake base? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so, so the separation of compute and storage has a number of different benefits. Um, first and foremost is it really lets you manage costs much more differently, right? You can scale storage completely independent of compute, right? Yeah. So, so that's one huge benefit that we bring. Um, and uh, we're, we're just now getting started. We started to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're thinking of for the future with open formats and storage interop to go down that path. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the fundamentals that we have now, we think can open up a whole new paradigm of how databases and analytical systems will work together. Wonderful. And you mentioned about kind of the innovation that was happening on the in uh, analytics side. Uh, obviously, on the other side of the house, we've seen Neon do really phenomenal things. I would like to say that they're probably like a leader of the pack. Uh, when when did discussions start happening? You know, we're hearing all these big announcements of kind of how we've secretly been working together for I don't know how long now. Can you tell us about the start of that journey? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So, so in the world of databases, I'd say, I think there's been three major stages of innovation in databases. The, so the, the first round of databases, which we talked about, were these sort of big monolithical systems. Yep. Compute and storage is tied together. There's a first round of cloud databases built on this model, the first generation of databases that are in the, available in the cloud. There's a second generation that started to emerge a little bit on separated and compute and storage, and that gives some of the independent scaling benefits. But the thing that uh, Neon for us did really uniquely was take that to the next level. So almost now to what I think is like almost like a third generation of, of innovation, where they introduced some very, very smart uh, capabilities at the storage. We talk about separating storage and compute. Right. You can even within storage do some very smart things on how you separate storage for long-term durability and interop, and then for high-performance um, OLTP workloads. So Neon really innovated on that last layer. And what that, what that translates to for customers is something called you know, zero copy clones, fast branching, right. super fancy technical. How fast thing. are we talking about? Instant, here? like immediate. So if you have a two terabyte data, yeah. you can instantly clone it and create a branch from that data, which you can spin up a development environment on and operate on that data. In the old olden days of databases, which is still, unfortunately, most people's days of databases, yeah. <laughs> um, you, 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 if you try and... Uh, have a dev and test environment. Yeah. These are two different environments. Yep. Your test environment is here, your dev environment is here. You copy data over, you have to provision it independently, you have to set up your security, your permissioning, and everything else. Saying... Now it's just like straight away, <laughs> yep. branch the data, you can spin up compute independently. Neon also did some really nice work on serverless compute. That combination, super powerful, very, very differentiated in the industry. And we think really hits the sweet spot of these sort of modern develop ops, DevOps workflows that have just never been addressed yeah. before. And so maybe part of my ignorance, is that kind of analogous to like a Delta clone where you're able to like instantly make a copy yeah, of yeah, that yeah, data? That's right. Yeah. So the data is immediately available, branched so that you can look at it. And there have been some examples of this, but never at the sort of the, de the degree of flexibility together with the serverless capabilities. We can branch, you can have multiple branches. Neon has some amazing, amazing capabilities. The branches can be schema only, lots of super, super cool things. Mm -hmm. And all packaged together with the way that compute is handled, we think really is on, is on the cutting edge of what is possible. And then we, as we talked a little bit about, starting to innovate also on some open formats and how we might think about interop with analytics and transactional systems, mm -hmm. different query processes to being able to read different formats. We think there's something really uh, unique here that we have. And so maybe... I'm not seeing this, but in terms of like the different compute, I understand separating out kind of uh, development and testing and, and that kind of stuff. But in terms of, let's say you've got your production database, what are the instances where you would want different compute? Is it like a t different type of machine that's good for different workloads, a different sizing, different cost centers? Uh, tell us about why you want different compute. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a super, super, super common example. And I would probably all run into this case at some point where you have your main production system uh, going and someone somewhere has accidentally fat finger deleted a table. So all never. of a sudden, that's never. probably me. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've never done that. <laughs> on a Friday so, afternoon. Yeah. You know, it is, actually, Friday afternoon sometimes <laughs> okay because then you don't have to do regular reporting to your industry's financial body unless you back until you you get it back on by Monday. <laughs> don't do it on a Monday morning. Okay, Whatever. all right. Don't do it on a Monday morning. All right. So fat finger delete, um, and then so uh, what do I need to do to recover that? Right. So now with point in time recovery and instant branching, you can have your production instance running, and 
very quickly branch. You don't have to build up such a big mm -hmm. environment to run. You can quickly spin up a lightweight um, a compute environment to pull the data that you need and load back into the main branch. You can also use that for testing. Uh, dev agents who that might want to spin up shut down very quickly, very short, fast life cycle yeah. while they iterate and learn. Then you might create a branch, do something in it, realize it's a bad, uh, a bad experiment, just kill it, do it again, do it again and again and again. You can do hundreds of these at the speed of computers as opposed to yeah, you mentioned of deployment and infrastructure management. You mentioned agents, so because it's so quick to do this and it's so simple to basically just run a line of code and, and get a database. So agents are basically creating more and more of these databases, what you're saying. Yeah, and th this is one of the amazing things uh, that Neon has learned over the last year. Uh, so Neon has been an amazing platform. They've targeted very much, you know, with Neon, we've very much targeted like developers, Yep. right? Um, and developers want that fast iterative uh, environment. And even more so, the platforms, the vibe coding platforms that are running on Neon, yeah. like if I'm vibe coding an app, I need a database, right? Yeah. So Comes in I definitely did not spend all of last week doing that for the demo. <laughs> yes, yes, right. <laughs> so you need a database. So now these platforms, they can very easily create them, provision them, spin them up, shut them down, do it in a very cost-effective way. And what, the, what, what, what we've learned with Neon is that 80% you know, of the database that are created they're no longer, they're not being created by humans anymore. They're being created oh. by machines and agents, right? So I think that's a super interesting uh, angle and obviously ties in super tightly with analytics and ML, mm. learning and AI use cases. Yeah. So you briefly mentioned Heineken earlier, and I know you've been working with lots of other customers. Were there any, uh, when you did start kind of like opening up those private previews, were there any use cases that kind of surprised you? They're a little bit out the box or? Yeah, I mean, so... One thing that's kind of interesting for us is, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're just starting on the database journey, right? And the database market is a very, very big market, right? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of joke that half of my time is telling people when not to use us. Yes. <laughs> because I, I, the people will say, I, I would like to do X. I'm like, please, please don't, don't, don't yeah. no bad idea. <laughs> yeah. But they will maybe go try and do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, you know, we have people who will, who will push giant amounts of data in or spin up huge amounts of pipelines to move data. And, you know, one of these examples of like, you know, doing things uh, in automation, we, we, you know, we caused a little bit of an outage inside of Databricks the other week when one of our customers um, started to create more DLT pipelines yeah. than we'd ever seen created before in a day. Okay. And, and yeah. so, so, you know, we were like, oh, okay, great. Let's, we did a, and that's, you know, we shouldn't let customers do that, I guess. So yeah. we'll have to dial back back. But we're finding now some of the patterns and use cases where they do that. I mean, super common use cases, though, serving data, taking data from analytics, from Delta, putting it into uh, lake base to serve it out to an application, low latency serving, super common use case. And then just also just general application uh, uh, development where you mm -hmm. are managing and processing orders, maybe with analytical data. And then the beauty of Databricks apps means you can also deploy it into that yep. uh, and have a full environment. That's, that's almost like the reverse way, right? Where it becomes like the backing store for these applications. Yeah. And then we can like easily replicate that into a Delta yeah. table and do yeah. downstream analytics. Yeah. Well. So we've got a lot of people watching at the moment. If they wanted to get started with Lakebase, how would you recommend they get started? Oh, uh, yeah. So we announced, very, very excited to announce that we're in public preview today. Woohoo! So exciting. Uh, you know, this is like, we announced that we acquired Neon. Like Lakebase is built on Neon today. So we've been working with them for a while now. And so we're very, very excited to take all that magical technology, put it into public preview today. We're starting with a provisioned capacity model. We have opened up a certain amount of the branching capabilities while we see how it goes. But we are really excited. Just go into the, um, the preview part of the um, uh, workspace administrator, turn on lake base. Uh, start using the product and uh, give us feedback. We are super oh, excited. Awesome. Dave, it's been absolutely fantastic having you here. Your, your passion for this product really, really comes through. And I hope this translates to the work that you're doing at home as well.